Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us today. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Almost everyone has a dizzy spell now and then, but for one person it might be a fleeting feeling of faintness, while for another it could be an intense sensation of spinning that lasts a long time. Vertigo is a feeling that the world around you is spinning or moving. Some say it is as if the individual himself is doing the spinning. The condition can feel similar to motion sickness. There are two categories of vertigo, peripheral vertigo and central vertigo. To make sense of this is an ear, nose and throat surgeon at the University of Abuja, Professor Titus Ibekwe, is also president of the Foundation for the Sick and a health policy and management specialist. He joins us via Zoom from Asaba in Delta State. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mary. It's nice to be here again. Let me start by asking you, you know, vertigo is set, said to be a symptom, which means there's a deeper underlying cause of the vertigo, of the spinning sensation. What are these underlying causes of vertigo? Okay, thank you so much. Um, wishing Merry Christmas to our viewers. Well, first is um, to say that, as you rightly pointed out, uh, vertigo is um, what I would call hallucination of movement. The environment is spinning as you describe, but it is not real. Okay, so for that reason, when we flip over to um, possible causes and how it arises as the past, it's worthy of note that the ear has two organs domiciled in there. One is the one that everybody knows, is an organ for hearing. But the second one, which is not as popular as the first, is that it's also subserved for balance. So the component of the ear which subserves for balance, when it develops problem of any sort, when it is diseased or when it is malfunctional, then this problem arises. So basically, the part of the ear that refers semicircular canal or the vestibular organs generally within the ear. So in the component of that, that has this problem, it will result to the hallucination of movement, which is vertical. Suffice to say that this could be due to infection, it could be due to trauma, i.e. somebody had had an accident, hit the head somewhere, it could result from this. Again, it could also be due to some abnormal growth within the ear or within the head and neck area. Sometimes this problem can arise away from the ear as primary site. It can be from the neck when you have some compression of the vessels that supply the ear, that could result. And in a lot of cases, is what we call idiopathic. Nobody knows the cause. That is the class where about um, close to 70% of this belong to this category, which is referred to as PPPV, benign paroxysmal positional attack. Okay, I, I really oh, love it I, when you say um, hallucination of movement. That's just the best description for it. Does it, do other symptoms accompany it, even in the idiopathic type? Are there other symptoms? Yes, there are. Apart from the problem with movement, which is usually triggered by um, when one has adopted certain postures by trying to get off from the bed, stretching to hang something, you know, or stretching to pull out something from the shelf, sudden such movements that affect the head and neck area, or suddenly standing and tilting the head forward or backwards triggers this off. And this should be distinguished from just dizziness, because you know, some people will tell you, I am feeling dizzy. So 
for dizziness, most of the time when you lie down, you realize that the dizziness goes. But for this vertigo, once it's on, whether you are lying down or you're standing up, it's on. It doesn't stop. Um, and it has different durations. So beyond this, these individuals may feel like vomiting, what we call nausea. They feel like vomiting, retching, but nothing is coming out. And some instances, frank vomiting may happen. And this vertigo may be combined with some other symptoms, you know, when it is arising from a different form of disease. For instance, what we call the Meniere's disease, which has three components. This vertigo is one. You have tinnitus, which is noise in the ear, and you have episodic hearing loss or fluctuating hearing loss. Right? At one time, you're hearing better. At another time, you realize that you're not hearing well. And such vertigo is episodic. It comes maybe during the morning hours, it happens, evening you're free. So when you have those three components together, start talking of what we call Meniere's disease. So these are the ways that it commonly presents. So with about 70% of it being benign, should we be taking this vertigo seriously then? Or when should we take it seriously? Well, I think it's an illness that one should not wish one's enemy. Because um, it has suicidal tendencies when it is on for a very long time. Individuals may start thinking of what is life all about. Because suddenly you feel as if um, there's an earth tremor or an earthquake happening and the, the earth is about opening for the person to get sunk in. So it's as um, severe and as dangerous as that. And you could imagine anybody by chance that is driving when this happens. It also is a common cause of um, road traffic accidents. You know, so it's advised that anybody who is having that diagnosis should not drive until it is fully resolved or taken care of. So any of the vertigo, any of the causes will be taken serious, whether it's um, idiopathic or non-idiopathic. And you can only know when the person is fully investigated. So following full investigation, you will be able to know if it is the one that has a cause or not. So whether you're able to find out the cause or not, you should be taken serious at any point in time because of these reasons that I've already enumerated. Tendency towards suicide and falling into being a victim of accidents. And in fact, it's a nauseating situation that makes life unbearable. Individuals who suffer from this. When you talk about road accidents, it makes me think about motion sickness. You know, when people are in a car and they feel uncomfortable, they just can't handle it. Is it related to vertigo? It's very similar, but it's not the same. Motion sickness is completely different. And uh, for individuals who have this, it's usually triggered off by either that um, they are ascending heights or they are in serious motion, either driving or when the aircraft is taking off or landing and stuff like that. So such individuals already know that this is what they have. And once that is off, the individual is OK once again. And such people, they know some carry antigenetic drugs and stuff like that, which they can take and get OK. But vertigo as um, a symptom or an illness, as it were, um, can come at any time, apart from the episodic ones. And um, individuals need to be fully, you know, assessed, right diagnosis made, and then treatment follows. As Do you sometimes treat this non-medically, that is, without medication? Absolutely right, Mary. Um, in fact, most of the cases, you don't use drugs to treat. Most of the cases. For instance, the BPPB I talked about, which I say it constitutes about 70% of all cases. You know, the problem here is that um, the vestibular system, 
which is the organ within the ear, which is observed for balance, which I've described before. The three semicircular canals, within them, they are like two. It's a tubular structure. And in each of these tubes contains some calcium crystals, which are like grains of sand. And um, following movements, when you tilt your head to one side, as I have done now, what's going to happen is that these calcium crystals will empty in the opposite direction. And when this happens, it helps you to righten yourself, to stabilize yourself. Don't feel this. Following some physiological mechanism within there. And when you return to the normal position, gradually they will go back from where they emptied from. But for cases of BBPV, the going back to the initial position is hampered so that some of these um, calcium ladens, they hang on around this tubular structure, this ring, and refuse to return back to the basis. So when they are there, they keep on stimulating, you know, chains of movements. And when these are submitted together, it culminates to what the patient has. So in managing this is to fashion out some tested and trusted exercise that will help you to re-empty those calcium leaden crystals within the semicircular canal back to the original position. And once that is effectively done, this patient gets better. Okay. Gradually gets okay. Do, does that mean that it's totally manageable problem you can return these crystals once they return the person is free and it doesn't happen again or is it something that recurs depending on the person is it uh, you know absolutely right some the, two, the, two, yeah, the two scenarios are real most of the cases when it is well done you may do more than one session you know they perform more than one session for the patient right so um they do it gradually, everything stabilizes and patient is okay. In some situations, one may be enough to stabilize the patient once again. But this must be done by an expert, by an ENT surgeon that knows what to do. You know, there are some specific positions. You position the patient on a special couch. That's how the head is dropped, tilted downwards. And you rotate this patient along the axis of the natural position of these semicircular canals. And when you're doing that, initially when you start, um, the this, this symptom gets worse. The spinning will just it will provoke the spinning. But by the time you finish, the spinning dies down and you return the patient at the position. But in some severe situations, you also got to manage the other symptoms if the patient is actively vomiting or having this nausea, then you need to give some anti-emetics, you know, to be able to get patients better. That's where drugs. There's also what we call labyrinthine sedatives. If this is happening too frequently, there are some special drugs which target this um, semicircular canal. It has a way of quietening the activities within there. It's a sedative, but selectively acts on the, on the semicircular canal, the structures. Prof, so you can have such drugs. Sorry to interrupt to you. Let's continue this after the break. We need to take a short break, but let's hang on to that thought when we come back. Stay with us as we take a short break. Welcome back. It's Health Matters on Channels TV, and we're talking about vertigo. You can call 0808-054-2233 if you have questions on vertigo, like I have, lots of them. You can also tweet at ctv underscore Mary A or send me email, moalale at channelstv.com. Doctor, I'm yes, curious. Mary. I think a lot of people will be a bit surprised to be told by a practitioner that, you know, this your vertigo or your spinning sensation has something to do with your ears. 
How do your patients react when they get to you and you tell them something in their ear that is a problem? It's a brilliant question. You know, a lot of people, even before they get to the hospital, would have been thinking of things that are completely out of this world. You know, some we associate this to diabolical, you know, even that related oh, things, yeah. and uh, you know, you said yeah. some funny things, but that is the history of taking a good, the power of taking a good history, because um, this is typically one of those diseases that, even without performing investigations, by a very good interaction with your patient, you'll be able to reach a diagnosis which is the beauty. But uh, most of them have a sigh of relief when um, you got to make them understand that this is not an extraordinary thing that a lot of people, at least 3% of the world's populace, three out of every hundred suffer from this. You know, even though the particular age group um, are more disposed, which is usually the elderly people, uh, well, Surely the elderly, you know, 50 years and above, you know, they are most predisposed. And it's more common in females when you compare to males, you know. So uh, lifestyle is also very important. So if you take your time and educate these patients, at the end, psychologically, a lot of them will start getting better. You know, um, for instance, um, those that have um, the components triad of Meniere's disease, which I have described before, you let them know to, that the, the need to change some lives as smoking, alcohol, excessive salt in food. All these are triggers. And um, once they start observing uh, uh, the instructions, as we taught them, things will get better. Carry on with the exercise. Those who need some drugs will treat it and move on with your investigations in situations that you are suspecting that the causes need to be in there, not just BPPV. And uh, once these are uh, diagnosed and treated, definitely the patients can be better. Yeah. I imagine that when you have the variety that is caused by an infection, you use some antibiotics and all that. But I want to ask you, since this vestibular uh, system it seems so important to balance. Can it be fully restored after an insult to it? Or does the person yeah, lose um, hearing or something? Yes, it's, um, it's really a difficult situation to handle. Those ones that are due to trauma are usually very difficult, very recalcitrant. It means you have a prolonged battle. You know, in some situations, you may not have 100% relief. You there, Prof. But Just a second. Can get we are getting a call from Rosemary in Lagos. Let's find out what she wants to know. my question. Please, go ahead, Rosemary. Okay. Um, thank you very much for this uh, program. And uh, this, this is my sickness. At times, you know, I just sit down. I will go to bed, no problem, but when I wake up in the morning, my head will just be spinning. Just be spinning. Then at times, it's as if they are playing band inside. I've been to my doctors, they gave me, I have a, this tablet I'm taking, Femisty, 5 milligrams. When I take it, at times it goes off, at times it will knock. It goes and comes. Goes and come. I don't, at times I get confused. I wouldn't really know what to do. Thank you very much, Rosemary, and thank you so much for that call. Uh, Professor Ibekwe, do you have anything to say about this? Yes, um, so let Rosemary know that um, actually her problem is tinnitus. That is noise in the That's ear. That's the band. Uh, yes, yeah, feels... noise in the ear, and then um, it comes in different forms. Um, different types of sound, ringing, humming, beating, you know. It could be either of the ears or the two ears at the same time. And um, this usually gets worse either early in the morning or late in the night. And it's not for any particular reason, but because 
at this time of the day, the environment is extremely quiet. So the environmental noise that would have helped mask the level of this sound is completely cut off at this hour. So you're meant to leave with it 100% at that point in time. Um, I would advise Rosemary to warn the patient. It's one of those diseases where the patient must learn to be patient. Mm. And secondly, to make sure that um, she's being seen by a qualified ENT surgeon. The drug she mentioned is good for a start, but there are still other options that will be explored by the ENT surgeons depending on how she performs or what she's currently on. Um, so that's the much I would say, because it's not an avenue to diagnose and treat. Of course, you can't do that until you're able to see your patient and direct to be, to be examined. So that is it, it's tinnitus. So uh, tell us, what are the complications of vertigo? But before you do that, let me take this call. Hello. Okay, so go ahead with the, the answer to that question. Complications of vertigo. Okay. Now, um, well, I've already mentioned this during the course of discussion. The quality of life of the patient that is affected is at its lowest end at this point in time. If inability to perform and function fully, carry on with your usual day-to-day -day activities and responsibilities. Yeah. And um, some psychological depression would follow a prolonged fatigue, proneness to accidents, mm. both domestic and uh, yeah. vehicular or road traffic accidents very high. Yeah. So um, these are some of the problems and the height of it is suicidal tendencies. So that is why it is a situation that should be tackled very promptly by the experts of the ENT surgeons who help you to manage and post through. First of all, get it to a manageable level and work towards seeing how this finally Thank you so much, Professor, for coming on the show. That was just so enjoyable. And I know that there are a lot of people have been enlightened this morning. Thank you for coming on the show. And thank you at home for being with us. You have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.